Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be reviewing The Ghost of Mama Mickey Season 1 Episode 8A called Monumental Disaster and later today I'll be doing The Ghost of Mama Mickey Season 1 Episode 8B called Talent Show. Yep, alright. So let's get right to it, and um, just like um, what, what was it called? The, um, um, the um, all systems no. I have a clip for this one, but I don't have a clip for talent show. I have to double check. There might be one, but I have to double check because I, I'm I'm not sure if there is one or not. There there might be one. I, I need, I need to double check on that because I don't want to miss opportunity of getting the clip in here. Okay, so we actually start, you know, outside and um, and we have the mayor. Okay, and he's playing like a record and he say, "Oh, you know, this is one of the proudest you know days of my life." And when I unveil this, and you see Ezekiel Tugbottom, and I just want to say, the statue looks great. The tornado, uh, the rope tied around it, even though this won't work. Yeah, him and this like pioneer cowboy, yeah, pioneer, um, the outfit, and he just looks very you know, brave and heroic. Yeah, sort of brave and heroic. Yeah, this looks like a cool statue. And everyone's you know, uh, and, and then he's like, oh, I guess this isn't my proudest bro moment. It's the chief went on him, and look. Ezekiel Tugbottom, 1872, Hero Brighton, um, BFFs with bears, big and strong, and, and never mean. This can only work because it's in this age and era, because in 1872, dude would not say this on a statue. But by these words, I can raise really tell that something's off. Obviously, statues and pictures can be deceiving, but words, yeah, I definitely can tell something's off. Oh, never mean, like he never got agitated once in his life. Like I can just tell something's off. I I can just tell, which is fine. It's you know, people just maybe didn't read it or something, and people just don't care. Um, okay, and everyone you know is cheering and stuff, and I, I like this kid's hair. And the hair color looks pretty cool. I, I guess this person is into hockey. Um, <clears throat> hockey. And we see Patty and um, this lady. Oh, wait, that's the teacher. Is that her wife? Hmm. Might, might be. Oh, keep calm and pioneer. Okay. And, and there's this guy. And he's like, woohoo. And then um, you see um, P and um, Sharon. Okay, I finally got it, Sharon. And we see your number one fan of Brian and Molly. It's like, woohoo! And she has a pioneer hat. And you know, she's like, oh yeah, go see it. And look, look, Daryl is in the wagon. As long as you know, the dad is okay pulling Daryl and maybe they're making a game out of it and Daryl's out doing something productive, I don't mind it because I don't know the context. But if Daryl's being lazy and Pete's like, a, you're like his servant, that that's just going to be weird. But again, I don't know the context. I don't know. And then, and then, you know, scratches in Molly's hat, the raccoon hat. It's like, why is everyone making a big deal about this guy? And scra Molly's like, scratch. Every Brightonian knows that Ezekiel Tugbottom is like the hero. Is the hero of Brighton. Brighton. And, um, how Molly brought this book from, like, her jacket. Wouldn't, like, the jacket be... Wouldn't like the jacket be very bulky on the left? I don't, I don't know. I, I just it seemed off. And then you know it says oh bottoms up, ha ha ha. And um you know and then just look and he wrestled a tornado. And right then there you know something's off. But there's also another side of me saying the book's probably just deceiving and Ezekiel actually just rescued the people away from the tornado. And we're just brave enough to go near to get the people to safety, like in a bunker or something. But he, he did not last on this thing. That would not work. And then, you know, and look, it, the, oh, you know, he has the American flag and he has a family. 
and I guess this must be either his wife or sister, um, maybe cousins, uh, maybe kids, or maybe little brothers and sisters. We don't know because there's no writing. It's just a picture. And look, he's best friends with a bear. And then, you know, it's scratch that I would rather die again than read that book. <laughs> okay. And then the mayor finally got the sheet off. Thank you. And it's like, okay, everyone, time for the feast. And then, uh, I didn't like this. This was weird. Because, uh, because, because this guy, um, I was his name, Martin, has cups. And he's like, no, no, Martin. C cups are not going to work in this party. It it didn't work at my eighth birthday birthday party. And it's not going to work now. Okay, jeez, like... You hold a you hold a grudge like. I mean, did he? Okay, I think it's pretty weird that he gave you cups like if it was like a birthday present or something, but maybe he's like in financial trouble, like. I just I'm taking a point off because this is just so weird. Like, and he brought cups because maybe no one brought cups to the party. You ever think of that, Mayor? Like, I just felt that we kind of weird, and you know, obviously he's like, like you know, aw, I f I felt bad for him because. He's probably in financial ruin. Like, look at him in saggy pants. Oh my goodness. And you know, this guy just like. Sorry, I keep on hearing. I keep on hearing knocking. And Scratch is like, oh yeah, I can't wait for food. And we see this uh, mysterious figure. Oh, okay, who can that be? Like a little mid mystery. Oh, okay. And um, then, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, here we have a better look. Um, BFS with bear is big, strong, and never mean. Okay. I like the trees. Not too well designed, but I like it. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Molly's like, oh, I, I wonder what the real Zeke of Bum would, you know, like, would. I wonder what his thoughts would be if he saw this and then this ghost shows up and. He looks like he looks like he's Zico Tug Tug Bottom. And Mom's like, who the heck is this guy? He's like, oh, they didn't get my nose red, but they actually got my oh, oh my rough exterior. Look, look, look at this. And boom. And he's like, oh, they got my charisma. And look, it's exactly him. And he's kind of very boastful about him. And then he's like, hey, look, 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 look at me. And he's like, are you a Zico Tug Bottom? Oh yeah, in the uh, ectoplasm. And say, like, oh, I'm like the five-time winner of the Best Citizen Award or something in 1978. And then, you know, and then, my, um, I just want to play this clip right here. I kind of want to get to the last part, but I don't want to play too much. And then he's like, oh, Miss Mickey, my friends call me Tuck. And to Tug. He's like, she's like, nickname status. And then, you know, Scratch has a sandwich and she he's eating it. Okay. And it's like, Molly, do, um, um, Scratch, do you know who this is? It's a disease you can talk about. And he, he just bleh, like throws up on her face. I, I, I didn't like that. Like, oh, look at Molly's face. That's my face. Like, are you kidding me? And it, 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 Scratch brings up some, not history, but facts. And, like, Scratch doesn't usually, like, lie if it's kind of, like, important, really. And Scratch is like, wait, this is who everyone's obsessed with? And he's like, oh, yeah, do you want an autograph? What was this, Scratch? And they, like, do you want an autograph? And they go, bottoms up, a hero Brighton. Oh, you know, tug bottom press. You know, he opens the portal, gets an autograph, and then Molly gets cleaned up, and um, and it's like, oh, I, I know him. He's from the Ghost World. Oh, yeah, that's scratch. And he's you know everyone calls him Tug the Tornado, and just like Molly and the fans, oh, it, it's because he wrestled the tornado. He's like, no, it's because he's such a big blowhard. He keeps on bragging about himself. Oh, Copovich, he did, and like you, you know, he, he he's a, he's an airhead. And he's like, he, he keeps on thinking he's better than everyone else. And Molly's like, he is better than everyone else. And the, Scratch like, because Scratch has been with Molly like long enough to know, okay, I know how this is going to plan out. Have your little fantasy and the wall is going to hit you. 
and I'll be right here when it does. And he has like a little clock, pocket watch. I love it. Give me that watch. And he starts to the timer. And then, yo, and, and, you know, Molly, it's like, uh, Mr. Tugwan, I mean, uh, t Tug, uh, it would be my pleasure to give you a tour of Brighton. And the, the look scratchy, just looking at the pocket watch, I can't wait. And then, you know, um, Zeke's polishing his statue, and, and he's like, um, Miss McGee, I would love nothing more. I guess I have to stop right here. Ooh, oop, oops. Um, okay. And they go to, like, the center of Brighton, and it just looks like a dump. So he goes like, huh, I look more energetic the last time I was here. Yeah, when you died. Um... I mean, before he died, obviously that would have been a sad day. And you know, um, and it's like, and Molly's like, hey, what, what, what should we do? And, and, hey, and Seagull's like, hey, Molly, I, I kind of have some improvement someone do for the town because he looks like a dumb. It's like, oh, that's so cool. And Ezekiel is like, um, yeah, let's name everything after me. And Molly's like, okay. Is it, oh, Zeke Street, um, Tug Bottom Field, he's at the, the softball field. Every, everything, it, the, um, instead of like a what was it like a farm or something or a tractor let's put my face on it like as the logo and like the mascot to town and then Scratch is like you hit the wall yet Molly you hit the wall and it's like no Scratch go away and you know and then um th there's um and Molly's getting a little bit irritated like okay you want to name stuff after you okay and then um and there's like a building burning and and there's a person trying to get out the window and she's a, i think it's like a woman she's about to slip in you know and then you know um your ezekiel is like a you know, tug it's like oh, i'll save her and bong like they hear her, like, his like belly and then and then you know um i was like huh scratch i was right he's a hero he's gonna say that lady and he saves his painting oh and then i was like what about that poor woman yeah she didn't save the painting And even Tuck is like, get her fired? We're not saving the painting? But that's not her job. And you're dead. So, I'm taking the point off. Because that does not make any sense. Because there's one thing being kind of like a blowhard. But another thing being like a complete douchebag. How much more douche you can get? Like, ugh. But, you know, and then Molly calls the fire, de fire department. And then you could come over. And they put out the fire. And it scratches like... You know, looking at Pocket Watch, like, come on, Molly, why have you hit the wall yet? You lost. And Molly's like, you were right, Scratch. And they're in the li library looking through books. And he's like, I can't believe history was so wrong. And, and Scratch's like, okay, finally. You lost longer than expected. But you finally hit it. Thank you. Um, And we see the shadow person and Slippy. She's being awkward as always. And she's like, oh, hey, I know who the true hero of Brian is. I'll tell you what happened with history. Ooh, cool history lore. And then you didn't. Um, and I love Noir Libby. She's awesome. And, you know, Scratch and Molly's like, huh? And they follow Libby. And there's like a book of, of hidden passageways. And, and, and they go inside the, the, what would be like the archives. They open, do they turn the lights? Obviously, Scratch is invisible. Or Tilly, uh, Tilly. <laughs> this isn't Big City Dreams. Um, Libby would say something. And, um, you know, and Libby's like, here, here's this book. Read it. And, you know, she's like, oh, what was this? Like, you, you have to read it. And, you know, so, oh, okay. And, um, and, oh, I, I forgot. It was a, sorry, the, the, um, it was like a presentation of, like, Zeal talking about oh, how he's so great, how he wrestled the tornado and stuff. But this time, it's showing that his older sister did everything. Oh, Zeal didn't like turnips, but her sister liked to grow them. And she cared for her family. And Zeal just was lazy. And he could do stuff, but he just didn't want to. And I liked how it didn't show that. <clears throat> it showed that Zeal was a coward. Like, oh, he froze in terror. But that uh, was Sally. She had a lasso and wrangled Tug and brought him to like a cellar. So he, she didn't wrestle Tornado because I'm like, that would be impossible. Unless they're like a, a ghost or something. So, thank you. They didn't make her to like a superhero. Oh, look at the brother. He's so cowardly. And the sister like fought the Tornado. Like, no. No one should be able to do that. And we said, and then Molly has already been mad. Like, 
So his older sister did everything. Oh, who's the cause of this? And right at the moment, I pop. I, um, like you know, um, I was kind of like, okay, I had the process in my brain. Okay, this is the moment. This probably could either make or break the show for me. It could come back, but it's probably gonna take like a lot, like a lot of ghost council, a lot of ghost stuff, a lot about the curse, and a, a lot about reveals and stuff like that to make up if they mess it up. I'm like, do not make it about because Sally was a woman. And Ezekiel was a man, and they put all the glory to men instead of women. Please, please, please don't make it about that. Thank goodness it wasn't Ezekiel that kind of changed it because we don't know the full story. But I'm assuming because you know, because Libby, I, I'm kind of surprised Molly didn't know know about like who did it because on the book it says Tug Bottom Press. We even saw it, so I wonder why Molly didn't really know, but. But it says talk about press. I said, like, "Oh, Ezekiel did something. He probably changed it to make it look like it was him." So he's pretty crafty. Thank you. So Ezekiel did something. It wasn't society and all that hoopla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can continue watching the show without agonizing pain about this episode. It's a, you know, it's a, it's not a bad episode. Thank you. Whew. But I was like, oh my god, they. Do something, you know, men versus women. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be really, really, really bad. But at least for my taste, I don't know. Some people don't like it for some reason. I don't know. I don't know why. But um, it was Ezekiel who did something. I was like, oh, and Molly is like, you know, I'm kind of like, how is this gonna work out? But I guess people just believe the truth, which is cool. And it's a small town, so you know. And you know, she's like, oh, you know, um, you know, a tug took you know his older sister's credit for himself. Oh, you know, it would be Sa she would be Sally who you know, should be the the, um, the um, most heroic person in Brighton. And we actually see that Ezekiel is a powerful ghost. Oh, this was so awesome! And he's like, "You dare ruin all my hard work!" And then Scratch tries to defend Molly. He's so he's obviously a little bit scared. And he's like, "Oh, back off, you big blowhard!" He turns into a big tornado. Oh, time to live up my name. Tug the tornado. He turns into a huge green tornado. Blast Scratch into the ghost world. Oh, oh my gosh, Scratch is gone. Because Molly can't fight a ghost. Like in an actual battle, I don't think Molly can do that. I mean, obviously she can probably fight off like a fright because Scratch does that to Molly and Molly can obviously deflect off it. But also Scratch is the worst of the worst of probably other ghosts would be kind of freaking because Molly's actually pretty freaking out. She's being a little bit brave because she's courageous. Because you know, Tug is like, oh, who you who would you really want said like you know person who wants to be a hero? And Molly's like, a real hero, and she's right. And you know, um, you know, you know, Tug tries to attack her and he throws a tree, it hits the statue accidentally. Oh no. I was kinda oh no, not a statue, but I love the statue. And he's he's like, whew. Pfft. Smash into a, a million pieces, dust everywhere. Tug's like, you ruined everything. And it's like, oh my gosh, is he gonna kill her? Oh my goodness. But Sally comes to the rescue and she's on a bear. And, 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 and Scratch, I love it that Scratch said, Molly, I brought help. Because who to put a little brother in his place other than an older sister? Thank you. And obviously, you did, oh, Tug, what are you doing? You know, you should be helping folks and not hurting them. And he's like, I just wanted to be a hero like you. So, okay, I guess he was kind of jealous and of her older sister. But you should have put the work and effort that you would have been. And you would have both gotten a statue. But no, your statue got destroyed. So, that's on you. And, you know, um, at all the town is saved. There, there's a new statue of Sally on top of a bear. It's, it's a good statue. But I kind of prefer the tug on top of a tornado one. I don't know. I just like it a little bit better. Again, I love the Sally on top of the bear statue, but this um, like a brave person on top of a tornado that with a, like a brave face. Oh, that just looks so awesome. But it's still a good statue. It's still a good statue. And Sally's like, "Hey, Molly. Um, you know, um, I'm not sure if Scratch told her about, um, told her about Molly, but he probably did because." Because, you know, um, Sally's like, hey, Molly, thank you for taking on my legacy of keeping Brighton like a great place and with great people. They thank you for that. It's okay, Tug, time, time to go. Like, and then, you know, they go away and, you know, um, 
And Scratch is like, oh, you know, Molly, are you okay? And she's like, yeah, I'm okay. And Luffy's like, you know, we, you know, I uncovered the truth. I, you know, we exposed Tug for that fraud he was. And Sally got the recognition that she deserved. No politics. Thank you. I'm sorry, I just need to keep on saying that. No politics, thank you. Um, that's, you know, bad. Um, and, you know, basically, and we actually get some, something which I was kind of hoping from, what was it? Hooray from Hollywood, because Libby was kind of freaking out that she thought Carl, which was Scratch in like in disguise on the, with a ghost sheet cover, she almost thought that, that you know, Carl's floating and Molly distracted her. And then you know, Libby's like, hey, Molly, I want to tell you something. I've been not only been doing noir stuff, I've been researching paranorm paranormal stuff. Paranormal stuff. And then, you know, um, Molly's kind of not paying attention. She's like, oh, yeah, that, that's not Libby. And Libby's like, mm. And then that's the end of the episode. I was like, ooh, Libby's doing paranormal stuff. Ooh. So, okay. That's in you know, that's the end of it. Okay, I give this episode a... Let's see. Molly not paying attention. Libby. Um... The whole thing is Yuko trying to get the one fire. That was kind of eh. The whole, you know, the, the, um, the, um, the, um, you know, scratch spitting on Molly. Eh. Um. Um, the whole cup thing. That was kind of weird. Um. Yeah, was that really all the complaints I had? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I thought this was a great episode. 80%, 8 out of 10. The song, you know, um, Best Friends Day is my number one song so far, like, in, like, you know, season one. At least, in, like, in, you know, in the first half of season one right now as I'm, you know, um, doing my reviews and stuff like that. It's number one. The song was good, but no, like um, my best friend say was like way better. And the one before that that was better than that was um, my best friend's bat mitzvah. So you know, my it was like you know, my best friend's bat mitzvah, and then it was um, best friend's day. So this the song was good. Like oh, you know, we could talk bomb did this and that. Do do do. It was good, but yeah, you can't match up to it. Okay, so I thought this was a great episode. Um, shoot, wait, I, I know it was a B. Wait, wait a minute, was it eighty or eighty-five? Um, let's see, the the cops, the spitting, um, Zico kind of being a douchebag, um, Molly not paying attention to Luffy, so yeah, eighty percent. Okay, so it was a B. Great episode. Okay, I'll see you guys later for the second half called Talent Show. Alright, bye.